What's going on everybody? My name's Chris. Welcome to my channel. This is part nine of my acoustic guitar build. It's the first guitar I've ever built from scratch. What you saw me doing here at the beginning was, uh, here's my neck blank. All right, so what I did was I measured for the headstock, the angle it needs to be cut, and I cut the uh, scarf joint there. So I cut that part off, and what happens next is that this gets glued onto the bottom of here. So what I have to do after this, I have to glue this together, and then I've got to thickness this headstock down to where it needs to be. So, and I've got to cut the end of this neck blank off too to make the heel. Um, I've made a few measurements on the side, so let me show you what those measurements are. All right, so I planed this side down. You saw me doing that, and I took some sandpaper to it. I took some sandpaper on a flat block here. So what I did was I decided about where I want to glue it together, and this has got to get thickness down, so I'm going to cut this top section off. So that brings us to this mark here which is, I guess, where the angle of the headstock will change into the neck. And that's going to be about five millimeters from there. And then I've got some more measurements down this way. So this first line is the scale length. So from the nut to that line there is my scale length. And then an inch down from there, that's going to be the tenon. But then I got to cut from that line and cut all that off. I really need to get a, I think a miter saw station or something. So quick recap, this is the neck blank. I cut a 14 degree angle there, that gets put like that. And then I measured from a 14th fret, added an inch and cut that off. So this is gonna be the saddle slot. Oops, not the saddle slot, this will be the uh, heel. But right now I'm gonna go ahead and glue the headstock. All right, I guess I'm ready to go. Cut a couple of calls here, piece of wax paper here. Here we go. Things are already getting hectic. Look at this. There we go. I think it's gonna be good. Got, as Robbie calls it, quite a mouse trap going on here. All right. All right, it's been about three hours, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take the clamps off and take a look at it. So, let's go. By the way, I did make a headstock template. I knew I would need one um, coming up pretty soon. So, uh, so I looked at my plans and it comes with a, a normal Martin headstock. Now, I own a Martin guitar already, so I wanted to do something a little bit different instead of just making it just a plain square headstock. So uh, I kind of got the dimensions from the Martin style one and drew it on some graph paper and then kind of just drew in some curves. You know, <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work or not, but at least it's going to be something original on my first guitar. Just want to let you know, I did do this kind of off camera. So it's been a couple of days and I got it glued. You can see I made a mark here. So I need to thickness the peg head now. So I got to go cut all this off and then flatten it out. So I've got to come off two, three millimeters all over. I'm going to work on that and then I'll come back to you when I'm done doing that thicknessing. All right, well, there you go. Got a thickness down to where it needs to be. So next I gotta cut the truss rod slot. I don't have a router table, so I'm gonna have to rig one together like a, using a piece of plywood or something. So let me rig that together and I'll meet you when I get done. All right, check it out. As I was looking at my neck, I noticed where the scar, there's the scarf joint. And I noticed on this very corner where it connected on this one side, there was a small little gap. I don't want that for sure. So I squeezed some glue down in it, forced it in the crack. And you can see that that's the glue squeeze out from that crack. So hopefully, hopefully, hopefully this will fix the issue and uh, there won't be any cracks. Anyway, I'll let you know how it turns out. I don't know if you noticed, but you might have seen glasses in a couple of shots. My eyesight started going bad when I was 39 and I put it off for three years buying reader glasses. Just in the last three month, three weeks or even a month, it seems like my eyesight is just taking a dive. It's just gotten so bad. I, so I broke down, I bought some, bought some readers, and it just makes it easier to see things close up. So. Uh, I just want All right, so what I've done is made a little 
makeshift router table. I've done this before in the past, but it's been quite a while. So I've got my DeWalt router attached to this piece of plywood and I've got a quarter inch straight cut bit attached and just a simple piece of plywood attached to the back tack as a fence. So I've done the best I can to line up my neck with that bit to the center of where that needs to be, right down the center. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna make it in several passes. Let me go ahead and make the first pass on the neck. Well, that seemed to work out pretty well. You can see the line I made here. Line, it stopped it right where I have my line at on here, so that worked out pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is make test cuts and then make full passes. So. I'll come to you when I'm ready. What I have here is I have a maple head plate veneer that will go first, and then I have a West African ebony head plate. And just to make sure, I took my head stock template and made sure I had plenty of room. So yeah, I should have plenty of room for where I'm gonna put it. I cut a couple of calls. I got one for the back and one for the front. And I think I'm about ready to go. So um, I do need the clamp right here too. This is at an angle. So let me grab a couple of uh, extra clamps that could possibly do that. And I'll be right back. So about that crack that I mentioned that was right here in between where I made the scarf joint. It did close up a little bit. It didn't close up all the way. But what I figured was, say my headstock's gonna go about right there. And I think that the crack is probably superficial just right on the edge so I'll be cutting the way my headstock is shaped I'll be cutting in about a quarter of an inch right there where that crack would have been so I'm thinking that if it's just superficial I'll cut past it when I go to shape the headstock I guess we'll find out later so let's go ahead and just do this I'm ready to go all right I don't want to put glue you know past that I think that's going to do it. <clears throat> so I'm just going to let it sit here and dry for quite some time now. All right, so I've trimmed that off. I need to make a cut here at the edge of where that angle is. And it's gotta be perpendicular or square with the top of the neck. Of course, I don't wanna just freehand it. So I've tried to come up with something to do. I've seen some people make some jigs that clamp onto the neck here, and then you use a piece of wood as a guide. So what I'm gonna do, Robbie, the way Robbie does it, he's been doing this for 20 years. He just kind of uses a stop on this side and eyes 90 degrees. Uh, I want to try to do a little, do it for me, who's a beginner, make it error-proof. So, so I made these two little blocks, and what I was planning to do is clamp these on top here, use another piece of wood like this, and then I can use the edge of that piece of wood as a guide. That's my plan, but I need to make sure that these pieces are the same angle, square with the neck. So, that's what I'm going to do. Let's do this. So let me go ahead and do this. I'm gonna clamp this going around the neck, you know, and I'm gonna line that side up and then I'll be ready to cut. I'll come back to you. I'm just gonna take it super slow, like stupid slow and get it done. This is gonna take a while, so let me go ahead and, there you are, turn off the camera, let me get through this, and then I'll come back to you. All right, I think I'm all the way through, so let me get these clamps off here. All right, so I should be able to pry this piece up. Look at that. There we go. So I've got the neck here, and 
here's the piece that I cut off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this piece into thirds and then glue them together to make the heel. I've already marked, measured and marked, so I just got to cut them and then glue them on. I've got a couple of things I've got to keep an eye on to make sure I'm doing right. So I got to make sure that I keep to the two rules uh, that Robbie lays out in his video. I've got some clamps over here and I think I'm ready to go. I got a couple of calls. These are the same calls I used for the scarf joint there. So I guess it's uh, nothing else to do but to, to go for it. Okay. <laughs> I totally did not even follow my rule. I put it on the wrong way. I'm glad I noticed that. Double check and recheck everything and still get it wrong, huh? All right, I'm gonna leave this overnight for sure because it's kind of late right now anyway. All right, so I barely got to trim any off. I just got a almost whisper cut the very edge of that neck off so I can I guess I'm kind of fortunate that I didn't you know make that any farther back or I would have been on a tenon room check it out see that line that's what I've got to cut I've got to cut this edge up to the line so I'm just gonna barely shave it with the blade which I'm gonna do on my chop saw but first I need to clean these up a little bit just to make sure that I'm sitting flat down on the chop saw bed these are a little bit proud All right, I'm gonna sneak up on this so slow, right up to my pencil line, but I'm not gonna cut the pencil line off. Okay, let me keep going and come back to you, back to you when I'm done. All right, so check it out. I cut as close as I could. I probably, you know, you know, I'd put the blade down and just kind of nudge this over until it was right touching the blade then come up and just cut and then nudge cut that's how i've always kind of creeped up on my line uh, using a chop saw kind of barely almost cutting just the width of the uh, carbide teeth but check this out that tenon's got to be seven eighths of an inch so watch let's just imagine that the 13 is one or zero all right seven eighths of an inch right there which is at the very very end so i got right at my measurement it's not any longer than 7 8 and it's not any shorter, so it's perfect. There it is. I went ahead and took a plane and just kind of evened up the edges of this head plate. Although I will have to cut some of that off when I shape the headstock, which I had actually intended to do in this video, but I've got to have the camera for something else this weekend, which means I've got to get all of the video off the card that's on the camera now. So that means this is gonna to have to be the end of this particular video. So I've got the neck constructed, all right? So I've gotta do the headstock. I don't have a back strap or a veneer to put on the back. Supplies didn't come with one, even though Robbie teaches how to do it in the course. Um, but I'm not doing a laminated neck like he did, so the transition won't look as weird as if I had a laminated neck just kind of disappearing right here. If I do a laminated neck, it makes more sense to do a back strap or whatever that is, a veneer on the back. I think I like the veneer on the back. Yeah, to have the, you know, the little volume or the volume, whatever you call that, and to have that uh, covering that up, to cover up that joint, that transition right there. But I think for this guitar, I'm just going to leave it as is, and uh, I'll be shaping the back, and I'll probably try to make a volute, or volute, 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 however you pronounce that. So uh, I've got to cut the heel cap shape out. I've got to determine where to put the bolts and drill in. So I've got to do all this stuff. And then, of course, I've got to cut my frets and attach my fretboard. So all that's coming up. So if you want to keep up with all of those things, Hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. It's, it's insane, like 99% of the views I get are from non-subscribers. So if you, if you notice you're not subscribed, just click the button. But you don't have to, you can do whatever you want. So <laughs> anyway, that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for keeping up with me. This is really cool. I'll just This was not actually that bad compared to some of the uh, body steps, but it's all working out. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.